There are plenty of different options as far as output goes for our Nintendo 64 systems from different mods like RGB, Ultra HDMI, different scalar boxes, cables. There are tons of different ways to get our video output from this system. But today we're gonna to be taking a look at a new solution from Eon, the Super 64. It's an HDMI adapter for the Nintendo 64. And I think this is a pretty cool device, but Today, we're gonna to be comparing it a little bit to some other solutions. That way you guys can see and make as best of an informed decision as possible. So I hope this video helps. But you may recognize Eon uh, due to their other products they have made, the GCHD and the GCHD Mark II, which is an HDMI adapter for the GameCube. These devices share some similarities in that they both allow HDMI. They're both the same price, $150 but they're not exactly the same. Where this device right here is gonna be very similar to using a RetroTINK 2X with S-Video, as a lot of people have pointed out and brought that up in the past. So we're gonna take a look at some different solutions here, give you comparisons, all that good stuff. Um, we will showcase RetroTINK with S-Video. We will showcase Ultra HDMI uh, and a little bit of RGB with HD RetroVision. Um, all that good stuff, just so you guys can get an idea. Everything will be clearly marked on the video, but let's go ahead and get into this. Take a look at the device, and here it is. Also comes with a little manual. It's not so much a manual. It's more of a fortune cookie, uh, you know, fortune. But, you know, it's a simple device to use, so they didn't really need to go all out as far as a manual. Uh, they have a little, you know, hyping up information here for the Nintendo 64, and then instructions on how to use it. It's simple. It's plug and play. Plug it into the back of your system, no modification. That's gonna be huge for a lot of people. Some people like to you know, keep the integrity of their system. They don't wanna cut anything open. They don't wanna open it. They don't wanna do anything. So this might be a good solution for you. Make up your mind, take a look at the visuals I'm gonna showcase in a moment. And I'll talk about pricing a little bit as well as far as other options go. Now, the cool thing with this, um, like I said, it's plug and play. It does have this little foot down here. So it kind of stabilizes once it's you know, on a table or a counter. It's not going anywhere, it's not moving around. So the design was thoughtful with that anyway. Uh, you simply just plug in your HDMI, your AC adapter, power it on, and you're good to go. Uh, this does have another feature, the slick mode, which is just a, a smoothing mode. It's got a little clicky button. They can make clicky buttons, but SNK can't make clicky sticks. What the hell, right? Um, but it smooths over the sharp edges, the jaggies in the games. For some people that might be cool. For me, it's not a feature I really care about. The RetroTINK also has the same thing, uh, very comparable results there. So we're gonna go ahead and put some footage up, talk about it a little bit, give you guys an idea of what we're working with, with this thing. Ultimately, what, what I want this video to be is, is this something I would buy myself? Is this a solution that I would purchase? Um, and just kind of give you guys the best information I can as far as other options go. That way you can make the best decision possible. Now, the other thing before we jump into the video footage is we are gonna be taking a look at some footage using the M cable. This was provided to me with the Super 64. Now, before I get into the footage, I'm just gonna put it out there that yes, the M cable does wonders, especially paired with the Super 64, it is amazing seeing what this cable can do. Now, I'm just gonna get it out of the way because I don't want this to be a video review for the M cable. Maybe another time, but today, I just wanna be brief with this. Everything will be clearly marked so you know what cables are gonna be, you know, are being used with the footage and whatnot. Um, but I just, wanna, I just wanna let people know right off the bat, is this a product I would've bought myself? And the answer is no. While yes, it does do some awesome stuff with the Super 64 and I was amazed seeing it, I'm not much of a person who's gonna spend an upwards of $100, close to $100 for an HDMI cable. Um, it works with everything and it does help with pretty much all these solutions using the RetroTINK, the you know Ultra, uh, Ultra HDMI, uh, RGB solutions. It, it, it does have a little bit of a difference with those to me, not as drastic as the uh, Super 64, but I'm just not a fan of paying that kind of money for an HDMI cable. Now, if you're gonna use this for multiple devices, maybe it's something for you. 
I am impressed with it, but it's not something I would have purchased myself. So let's go ahead and jump into some footage. So first up, we're gonna take a look at the Super 64 using both standard HDMI and the M cable. I will have everything clearly marked on the screen. That way you know what you are seeing and we will comment on it throughout. So I'll let some of this footage play through and I will be right back to give you guys my thoughts. So here's Super Mario 64 using the M cable. And I do want to point out while you're watching this footage that the aspect ratios may change here and there. Uh, typically using the M cable in my capture software, I had to make some readjustments. So the aspect ratios may not be 100% to each option as far as my captured footage, but you can still quite see what the differences are. And I think the M cable does do wonders with the Super 64. So take a look. Good morning, Wedge. The Reds of Rogue Squadron is still back at base, but I thought we could take an early morning run through Beggar's Canyon. I think we've got a problem. Is that my imagination, or are those Imperial troops going dead ahead? They're attacking the whole set. So what did you guys think of the Super 64 footage? I showcased a handful of games with both options, regular HDMI and M cable. So while I give you guys my final thoughts on this product, I will be having some other footage shown while I talk about it and some screenshots of the same scene with a bunch of different options and variables. Everything will be clearly marked and I will upload the screenshots to a Google Drive or Dropbox link in case YouTube gets things a little funky and you guys want to look at the nitty gritty details. And we will also in the very near future do a handful more comparison videos to give you guys a good idea, you know, comparing versus this versus that super 64 versus RGB, that kind of thing. Just giving a little bit more of a focused uh, comparison. But with this device, while I think it does do an excellent job, especially compared to other more basic options, it is an expensive device. $150 is gonna be a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. Now, who would want this though? Who would want to pay this kind of money for this 
product, it's it's out of sheer convenience, in, in my opinion. It does a decent job of getting your Nintendo 64 output on a modern television. No fuss, no lag, 480p looks fairly decent. The slick or smoothing feature, not really a big deal to me, but it's there if you want it. So I think this product's going to be more appealing to people who don't have access to other options, who don't want to do mods to their system, who want their system to remain the same way it was when it shipped from the, you know, the factory way back when it originally came out. Uh, because there are better options. Ultra HDMI is a better option. You get better visuals. It's plug and play the same thing. Just pop in a HDMI cable. Yeah, you have to use a mini or whatever HDMI cable, but not a huge deal breaker for me. It looks great. RGB with, you know, very specific cables. The HD RetroVision cables looks awesome. The RetroTink with S-Video or the HD RetroVision on, an, you know, an RGB modded system looks great. The RetroTink with S-Video cables without a modified system looks similar to the Super 64. They do pretty much the same thing. Now, if you were to buy the RetroTink and buy the cables, some decent S-Video cables for a non-modded system, you're going to be in the same ballpark of price as the Super 64, but you now have a device that you can use for other systems. So I think the Super 64 is going to be more appealing to people who aren't not looking for solutions for other devices. They want something that is just a simple plug-and-play device. The RetroTink needs to be powered by itself, needs to use that mini HDMI port, that kind of thing. Some people don't want to mess with that. If you're a big fan of the Nintendo 64 and you're just looking for a way to get this output on a modern television, the Super 64 is an excellent option if $150 doesn't you know, destroy you, if that's just you know whatever to you. Some people, that's way too much, especially when you compare it to the GCHD Mark II and what that was capable of doing. It just seems like, yeah, the price is, is, is definitely high, and I do understand the criticism on that end. I don't know how the development costs worked on this thing. I know with it being what seems to be very similar to the RetroTINK and the RetroTINK also being a pricey device, but the Super 64 is system-specific where the RetroTINK can be used for multiple things. Similar technology, a fairly similar price. I mean, okay, I get it. There's not a lot of options you have with the Nintendo 64 with it not having native RGB. So tapping into that S video and, you know, line doubling it is probably the best solution for a plug and play device uh, that is lagless. So it's a really cool, it's a really cool option. Um, if I did not already have an ultra HDMI modded system, I would definitely buy one of these if I didn't have it. Uh, you know, the $150 would be something that I would kind of be like, ah, oh, man, this is a little pricey. Am I going to sell something to, you know, make the, the price a wash? Uh, am I just going to save up for it? Am I just going to say screw it and just buy it? I mean, it, it would be an option for me. It is something I would definitely consider buying if I did not already have better options. And if these options were not currently available, the Ultra HDMI mod, the kit, is very rarely available. It's hard to get. And to buy a pre-modded system is very expensive. To buy a pre-modded RGB system can be expensive, but it shouldn't be. Uh, I have seen them on the low end RGB systems at about a hundred bucks or less. Uh, but then you also need to take in consideration if you're gonna put that to a modern television, you are gonna need to have a solution to use HDMI, like an OSSC or a RetroTINK 2X. So there are additional costs with everything no matter how you look at it, the prices are going to be expensive no matter which angle you go on the Nintendo 64 to use it on a modern display, uh, you know, with some decent output. It's going to cost you. So there is that. While I think the Super 64 is an excellent device, I do understand it is an expensive device that I can't just sit there and say, yeah, everybody go buy it. It's something you need to make that decision for yourself. The things I have to say, I can't force you to buy anything. If you think it's too damn expensive and there's better options out there, then yeah, I agree with you. If you think, hey, this option is great, $150 is nothing to me, 
I'm gonna go ahead and buy it because now I can use my Nintendo 64, no problem on an HD TV. I agree with you too, go for it. The choice is yours, I just hope I gave you as much information as possible to see what this thing can do and what other options there are available. Like I said, I will be doing some future content, giving you guys some more comparisons, some really quick videos. I didn't want this one going on for an hour, uh, so look forward to that. Next couple days, I'll be dropping like quick little five to six minute videos, giving some video comparisons uh, with very little talk, just so you guys can see. So really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Links will be in the description if you are interested. And with that said, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out, bye-bye, and boom. Bye!